A very good evening to you with a Monday March, Monday, March 19th edition of the CBC Evening News. I'm Ryan Broom. In our top story, Prime Minister Frundle Stewart has pledged to change the political landscape of Barbados once the general election is called. Our Lisa Broom tells us he was speaking at the opening of the St. Peter branch of the DLP in Mile and a Quarter. Prime Minister Frendel Stewart has still not announced the date of the next general election, but he says it will be one to which Barbadians are not accustomed. Mr. Stewart said the DLP will make an extra push to get the northern constituencies into the fold of the party. We intend to change the political map of Barbados after that date that you will hear about in the very, very near future. He says the Barbados Labour Party has been making lots of empty promises to people across the island, engaging in what he has described as the politics of magic. That is how they've been doing it, promising everybody something. In the hope that in so doing, they can undermine the confidence of the ordinary man and woman in Barbados in the Democratic Labour Party and in the government, and that they can steal their way in the Bay Street. Now, the, as I have said before, the worst thing you can do in politics is to underestimate the intelligence of ordinary people. And the people have seen through it. And candidate for the constituency, Dave Cumberbatch, says the office is for everyone in St. Peter. Wherever you're from, whatever you do for a living, I want that house to be be there as a source of information, one where you can come and get advice, a house where, or an office rather, where you can come and learn, where you can get information so that you can better yourselves. Mr. Cumberbatch was notably joined by party stalwart Sybil Leacock to cut the ribbon, signaling the official opening of the branch office. Lisa Broom, CBC News. The 2018 sugar crop is heading for a late start. And if workers don't get what they want, the entire season could be in jeopardy. Shane Jones was at the Solidarity House this morning as a Barbados Workers Union met with hundreds of sugar workers. For the past two hours, over 300 sugar workers, both public and private, are in the auditorium behind me. They're voicing many concerns over a sugar industry that they are calling abandoned. Things are so bad, they say, that they are likening their situation to slavery. They say that if their demands are not met, action will be taken. From well before 8 a.m., sugar workers from plantations across the island converged at the BWU headquarters, driven by frustration and armed with demands. After long talks, BWU Deputy General Secretary Dwayne Paul said there would be a season, but he could not say when it would begin because of the workers' grievances. Poor communication in the, in this, in the industry surrounding the future, both for sugar agriculture and non-sugar agriculture. Uh, the uh, poor facilities in terms of provision of proper working facilities um, proper access to facilities, the issue of non-payments in terms of increases. The industry has not had an increase probably since 2010. Uh, there's no change or review of their incentive programs. Some of their incentive programs do not work because of changes in industry and they've been calling for changes to these incentive programs. There have been no changes to those incentive programs. So you have issues surrounding simple things that even provision of, of proper uniforms um, and this goes on. Mr. Paul says the sugar workers are kept in the dark on a range of issues. We are still yet to have an official announcement as to when the crop will begin. We are growing, drawing ever closer to the Easter season and it is traditionally practiced that the factory does not operate during the Easter season, which would mean that any keens that are harvested just before the Easter season will then have to wait till after the season to be processed, which means this, is, this has implications for the actual production that can be achieved. 
The workers say they understand the challenges of the industry, but they have put up with enough. There is a feeling among them that all the attention is given to the owners while those who toil are neglected. The BWU's Deputy General Secretary said in his view, the workers are being disrespected. He warned that action will be taken if conditions do not improve. We have indicated to the workers and what the workers have agreed to is that some of the issues that we have outlined above need to be addressed and will not be tolerated in this 2018 crop. And therefore, we cannot promise anybody that the crop will run as smoothly as the 2017 crop did as certain matters which are within the preview of management to address is not addressed. So there's a cloud of uncertainty over when the 2018 sugar crop season will actually begin and a promise of action if demands are not met. From Solidarity House, I'm Shane Jones for CBC News. Thanks so much, Shane. Well, residents of St. Lawrence Christ Church are trying to come to grips with the unnatural death of one of their own. Around 6.30 this morning, police responded to a report of a body found at a house located at number 21 St. Lawrence Road. It was then that officers discovered the body of Laura Springer. The body of 56-year-old Springer was found in her home, reportedly with several stab wounds. One neighbor who spoke to CBC off-camera says she was awoken by loud screams. This morning when I was in my bedroom sleeping, I heard a screaming, screaming, screaming. And I put on my clothes quick. I said, wait, somebody's screaming 2 o'clock in the morning. And then I got on my these old clothes and I ran up here to see where the screaming was coming from and realized it was coming from my friend's house. Meanwhile, Police Public Relations Officer Acting Inspector Rodney Innes says the force will soon be launching a public appeal to help find the attacker. We are going to launch a public appeal to anyone who can assist with, with this matter when further information comes to hand. Of course, we want to express sincere condolences and sympathy to the, to the family who are here at the scene. The ongoing Suez problem on the south coast has caught the attention of Germany. That country is the latest to warn its citizens and urge travelers to avoid the area. The information is contained in a travel advisory for Barbados, posted at the beginning of March. CBC News reached out to the Germany embassy in Trinidad and Tobago and was told they are monitoring developments on the south coast. If possible, depending on how the situation is handled, the advisory will be dropped. Recently, the United States, Canada and the United Kingdom all issued advisories, also cautioning their citizens. Well, as tourism remains a major earner for the Barbadian economy, a group of workers in the industry is being equipped with the tools to deliver quality service. Already half of the around 40 red caps operating from the Grantley Adams International Airport have completed the Barbados Together workshop. In addition to skills and awareness building on topics, including dealing with visitors with disabilities and customer service, participants in the five-day workshop are, being, are given a chance to experience Barbados as a visitor by taking in various attractions around the island. The Red Caps, who are under the management of Platinum Services, are now known as Frontline Ambassadors. And guest experiences manager with the Barbados Tourism Product Authority, Marsha Aleen, says the workshop outfit outfits them with the knowledge needed to provide an improved visitor experience. Our guests trust the information that they're given. When our guests come from the immigration and they have their bags and they're going through customs, these are the people they'll be asking, you know, what's the best hotel in Barbados? Is a hotel that I book a really and truly a good hotel? What's the best restaurant? What's happening in Barbados? What are the festivals that's going on? And we need to equip, equip them so that they can be even better ambassadors for Barbados. Well, we take a pause here, but when we come back, some reassurances about access, access to affordable medication. Barbadians will not have to pay more for medication just because changes were made to the drug formulary. This from Dr. Carol Ward, who is a member of the Drug Formulary Committee. Last week, the Barbados Drug Service announced that from April 1st, some drugs will be added to the formulary, while others will be taken off. Speaking on Morning Barbados, Dr. Ward said 
there will always be multiple free options for people whose medications were taken off the form formulary, but the person's doctor will also help to determine whether or not they pay more. Some changes will affect people in that they're on a particular drug and now they can't get it anymore on formulary. Right. It will still be available on island, mm -hmm. but whether they pay more or pay at all will depend on whether when they speak to their doctor, whether the doctor can make right. the change or if they want to make the change. Mm -hmm. Some people are happy with what they happen to be on. Right. And Dr. Ward also gave an example of the reason behind the change. In some cases, like the antihypertensive that Spain Wilson was talking about, the tyazide like the tyazide diuretic, sorry, um, they were taken off for scientific reasons. So while it was a mainstay for treatment of anti of hypertension in black people for years, the recent research has shown it's not really as effective as we thought it was and that you should instead be on a different type of diuretic. So what we did was we took them off, but the better ones mm -hmm. are on formulary. Mm -hmm. In other news, Caribbean heads of government have been accused of establishing regional institutions and then failing to financially support them. This charge from Minister of International Business, Donville Innes, who described the practice as unsustainable. They can find exorbitant sums to pay political consultants in the region. They can find the sums to travel to major cities outside of the region, but they cannot find the ten or fifteen thousand dollars per year to give support to regional institutions that really do assist generously in the development of the region. And I say to you, as fellow Caribbean people, you need to ask the political leaders in your own space if this is acceptable. It makes no sense creating regional institutions and then we find that others outside of the region have to put the money in to support it. The Minister Innes made the comments during the launch of a multi-million dollar grant scheme under a partnership with the Caribbean Export Export Development Agency and the European Union. And we'll hear more about that program later in the business report. Well, it's still too early to determine whether programs implemented by the prison to reduce the number of repeat offenders are working. This is according to Superintendent of Prisons, Lieutenant Colonel John Nurse. He says such a measurement must take place over a prolonged period of time and should take into consideration several factors. Has that person reoffended since leaving? If so, um, why? What are the factors which led to the reoffending? Um, so there are many things that we need to look at. Yes, you can easily say, look, he was in prison three, four years ago and he's back. Yes, um, that is true or that might well be true. Why? Has he committed a similar offense or is it for something completely different? Um, what led him or her to do this or to do that? And you find in, in, on many occasions that he is completely different. More Barbadians are coming forward for treatment after being diagnosed with lupus. This is according to President of the Hope Foundation, Shelley Weir. She was speaking on the sidelines of a seminar to assist newly diagnosed patients at the Accra Beach Hotel yesterday. Lupus is an autoimmune disease where the body's immune system attacks itself. Barbados has the second highest number of cases in the world. Ms. Weir says the growing number of Barbadians coming forward for treatment is making the job of healthcare practitioners a lot easier. Before to get people to this meeting, we would have to write to every GP and it was scattered all over the place. Lupus now has a focus. We have a rheumatologist in Dr. Flower and what we have seen is that when GPs diagnose a case of lupus, they would refer that person to Dr. Flower. So she now has oversight. We take another break here, but when we come back, we take a look at some of the stories making headlines across the region. Welcome back. Well, it was a historic day in Trinidad and Tobago as the country's first female president, Justice of Appeal Paula Bay Weeks, was sworn into office. Weeks is the sixth president of Trinidad and Tobago and carries on from former president Anthony Carmona. She was administered oath by Chief Justice Ivor Archie in a ceremony at the Queen's Park Savannah. 
In attendance, the outgoing president, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, and members of his cabinet, along with the opposition, family, friends, and well-wishers. In Trinidad, the president is the head of state and is responsible for approving bills before they become law, for casting an eye on the operations and behavior of the government, as well as being the head of the armed forces. The new president, in her inaugural speech, said, She's no stranger to developments in the country and is abreast with what's taking place. She urged residents to triumph over evil. It is a tenet of most major religions that light triumphs over darkness. Our Hindu community expresses the most visible manifestation of this with rows of theirs shining on the darkest night to symbolize the triumph of good over evil, of light over darkness. Even the humanists among us, who are of the school of philosophy that believes in human effort and ingenuity rather than religion I will agree that light is best seen in the dark and it is always darkest just before the dawn. Light always serves a purpose. Well, a glimpse into the world of sports is just ahead with Damien Best, but before we get there, here's a tip from Cooperators General Insurance. This tip of the day is brought to you by Cooperators General Insurance Company Limited. Insurance the way you want it to be. Some supplements are made in unsafe surroundings, like a basement or kitchen lab, and can be contaminated with steroids and other banned substances. This fact is brought to you compliments the National Anti-Doping Commission. <laughs> 